Welcome back to Science Chat with Drew. You know what sucks? A bunch of plastic littering our ground for hundreds of years. You know what else I don't like? Humanity's deep reliance on fossil fuels. If only there was something that could replace all the plastic in the world that is biodegradable and wasn't made out of oil. Oh wait, that's right. Today we're going to talk about bioplastics. Bioplastics are plastics that are made out of renewable resources, like vegetables, and or are biodegradable in the ground. We have our first caller already. Hmm. Looks like it is Jeremy from New York. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, uh, I was just wondering how bioplastics work. Jeremy, that is an excellent question. Bioplastics are made up of three main things. Hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Both bioplastics and regular oil-based plastics in fact, most all plastics are made out of those three main things. Coincidentally, both vegetables and oil are also made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. To further address this question, let's look at one bioplastic in particular. Pla. No? Okay, apparently the rest of the world calls it PLA. PLA is very similar to the oil-based plastic PET. Both of them are polymers. Polymers, as many of us know, are made out of a bunch of little monomers. The main difference between PET and PLA is that PLA monomers are derived from sustainable sources like plants, while PET monomers are derived from oil. PLA stands for polylactic acid, also known as polylactide. What's the main monomer making up PLA? Surprise! Lactide. So the PLA monomer is an oxygen bonded to a methyl group, then bonded to another oxygen. A methyl group is just a carbon bonded to three hydrogens and is commonly found in plant substances. The parentheses in this diagram means that this monomer can bond to others to make a string of monomers, also known as a polymer. Scientists obtain lactic acid by first extracting dextrose, which is a vegetable carbohydrate from corn, then using bacteria to ferment it to create lactic acid, which serves as the main base for polylactic acid. Scientists begin to create PLA by first taking those monomers and putting them in a monomer soup, which is really just the heated up plastic. As the plastic begins to cool, these monomers begin to bind together to create a string polymer. So you might begin to wonder, why doesn't plastic just look like a big ball of yarn? Well, these string polymers aren't in fact straight lines, but rather a big tangled up mess. And as the plastic begins to cool, the molecules in that mess begin to bond together and coagulate into a plastic. To answer Jeremy's questions, bioplastics work very similarly to oil-based plastics. It's just the monomers within the polymers of bioplastics come from plant substances, like corn. We have another caller. Okay. Hey, it's Sarah from Colorado. What's your question? So how do scientists create different types of bioplastics? That is a great question, Sarah. Sarah, you have brought us into the degree of polymerization. Oh, you chemists are just so creative with your titles. The degree of polymerization refers to the number of monomers in a polymer, thus the length of a polymer. Polymers with different lengths will form differently, and thus will create different characteristics as plastics. That's why even though these two things may be made out of the exact same polymer base, they have very different characteristics. <laughs> Scientists can modify the degree of polymerization in order to achieve certain desirable plastic characteristics. How do they do this, you might ask? With polymer caps. Polymer caps are the things that are at the end of those long string of monomers. Going back to polylactic acid in particular, you have on the left cap a hydroxyl group bonded to a methyl group bonded to an oxygen, and on the right cap, you have a hydroxide bonded to an oxygen, bonded to a methyl group, and bonded to another oxygen. In between these two caps is the long string of monomers. In addition to modifying the degree of polymerization, scientists can put additives into that monomer soup, which will affect how that plastic forms, and thus that plastic's characteristics. For example, scientists can put glycerin, which is a natural vegetable extract, into plastic to make it more elastic. Oh, now, if only we could make this bioplastic. Oh wait, it's like you're on the best science show ever. Hi, it's Drew and we're in the lab where we're gonna make some bioplastics. Earlier, we talked about polylactic acid. 
In this lab, I will be making a starch-based bioplastic, which is similar in structure to that of PLA. I will be using cornstarch, glycerin, vinegar, and sea vegetable flakes. For first, I'll be combining 60 milliliters of water, 10 grams of cornstarch. Now the carbohydrates in this cornstarch will be serving as the main monomer in this bioplastic. Additionally, I will be putting in 5 milliliters of glycerin to give it a little more elasticity. And 5 milliliters of vinegar. Now that I've combined the ingredients, I'm going to start to stir it together so we give those monomers, which is the carbohydrates and the cornstarch, the opportunity to bond together to form polymers. This will be my regular batch. In addition, I'll be making two other batches, one with extra glycerin and one with sea vegetable flakes. And we'll see what happens when we put those additives in there. Right now, I'm just stirring this regular batch and you can already see those monomers starting to bind together. It's been about a minute and the heat has kicked on, which has helped those monomers begin to bond to one another to form polymers. Those polymers will then coagulate and I bet pretty soon we'll have a full-blown plastic on our hands. So after stirring for about another minute, we can already see those polymers coagulating into a plastic. That looks like a very moldable plastic. Now that those polymers have finally coagulated into mostly a plastic, we're going to spread it out over a tray to let it cool along with the other two batches. I will repeat the process consistently. So it's been about 24 hours since I initially spread the plastic on the tray, and this has given them ample amount of time to cool. And as you can see, we have some pretty interesting results. You can see that the plastic is actually fairly cracked up. I assume that that's because I probably spread it a little too thin, and as those polymers began to tangle together, the plastic contracted while it cooled and made those little cracks. But nevertheless, this is still a pretty interesting plastic. Now this is the plastic with the extra glycerin added to it. And I have to say it is far more elastic uh, than the control group. Now the control group is also pretty interesting. I already have broken it up, but uh, when I hold it, it feels just like actual plastic pellets. Um, and well, it is actual plastic. And in fact, the awesome thing about bioplastics is that I was able to make this with just a few basic natural ingredients. Um, in fact, it's so natural that I could actually just eat this right now. It's, it's honestly not that bad. The plastic that we added sea vegetable flakes to is also pretty interesting. It too is flaky, but as I pick it up, I notice that it is also pretty hard and rigid plastic. Most likely because when the sea vegetable flakes were forming with that polymer, it got in with that tangled mess of polymers and didn't allow for a lot of flexibility and resulted in a fairly solid and rigid plastic. While this was a pretty simple type of plastic, it's still pretty impressive that something that has the potential to replace all of the world's plastic can be made from ingredients right in your own home. Since bioplastic is a relatively new concept, of course it still has some flaws. But thanks to chemists all around the world, they are becoming more available for daily application. Ultimately, bioplastics give us the opportunity to replace our current fossil fuel-dependent plastics with more sustainable and biodegradable alternatives, all thanks to the world of chemistry.